This is a new discovery concerning the Ross Ice Shelf in the west of Antarctica. Antarctica bombshell, tectonic plate found below the surface, which is slowly melting away. Well, this is uh, not uh, following what we learned a couple of months ago. This is no surprise because they found a new active volcano right under that area, a new hot spot. Now this is by Sean Martin on Express UK, today's article. Scientists made a shock discovery beneath the surface of Antarctica after finding an ancient tectonic plate which is having a major impact on melting patterns of Antarctica. As we know, there, is, there are already discovered over a hundred volcanoes in Antarctica. There's a lot of them are, that are active above ground. There are also others that are active below the ice sheets. And uh, the latest being what they just recently found from thermal images and testing on the west side of Antarctica, on the west coast, under the Ross Ice Shelf. The previously undiscovered meeting of the gigantic tectonic plates has been found beneath Antarctica's largest ice shelf, the Ross Ice Shelf, that is helping to slow down melting patterns. This massive tectonic plate has been in place for hundreds of millions of years. Scientists believe uh, that they have only just discovered this and the effect it's having on the ice shelf and the exterior of Antarctica. Researchers use a scanning system known as ice pod. That's how they look through hundreds of feet of snow at the tectonic plates. That's how they found the boundaries where the plate and other others meet is protecting the ice. Whether the West and East Antarctica tectonic plates, where they meet, that is, a division has been formed where the Ross Ice Shelf remains protected from the warmer seawaters. With the water not being able to reach the ice, the latter is not melting as quickly as previously uh, suggested by models. Marine geologist Christy Tinto is from Columbia University and she says we could see that the geological boundary was making the seafloor on the East Antarctica side much deeper than the West. That affects the way the ocean water circulates under the ice shelf. Also, geologist, glaciologist Laurie Padman from the Earth and Science Research Organization in Seattle, Washington said, we found that the ice loss from the Ross Ice Shelf and flow of the adjoining grounded ice are sensitive to changes in processes along the ice front, such as the increased summer warming if sea ice or clouds decrease. Now the next major step for researchers is to predict the future melting patterns of all this in Antarctica. Scientists will con uh, continue to monitor the Ross Ice Shelf, which has a surface area of the size of France, as part of the ongoing Rosetta Ice Project. Glaciologist Helena Amanda Fricker from Scripps Institute of Oceanography in California said to understand Antarctica, how it works, we need to consider the ice, the ocean, the atmosphere, the geology, and how they interact across various distances and time scales. The Rosetta Ice is a great example of how an eclectic interdisciplinary team comes together to look at a complex system and really shift our understanding of how it works. Now we know, for example, that uh, without Antarctica ice, our climate will be disastrous. It would be a lot hotter. We would have extreme weather and uh, for anywhere from uh, torrential rains to tremendous uh, hurricanes and uh, tornadoes. Uh, so, of course, it's important that it remains stable. <coughs> Sorry. Now, Antarctica, and how and scientists uncovered this shocking 650,000-year-old find below the ice shelf. Callum Hoare, Express UK, says the researchers made a discovery dating back 650,000 years that former U.S. President Al Gore dubbed shocking in his book. As we know, Antarctica is the Earth's most southernmost continent. 
It contains the geographic South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the fifth largest continent where temperatures are known to reach minus 90 degrees Celsius. But more than 1,000 scientists call this vast polar desert their home. They're there researching as they try to learn more about Earth's history through virtually untouched and unspoiled terrain. Gore revealed during his book, An Inconvenient Truth, how scientist Loni Thompson carried out a number of experiments around the globe to illustrate the threat of climate change. And he wrote in 2006, the dig core drills down into the ice, extracting long cylinders filled with ice that was formed year by year over many centuries. Loni and his team of experts examined the tiny bubbles of air trapped in the snow in the cylinder, the year that it fell. They can measure how much CO2 was in the Earth's atmosphere each year by calculating the ratio of different types of oxygen, which provides the ingenious and highly accurate thermometer. The team can count backwards in time year by year the same way an experienced forester can read the tree rings on a tree, simply observing the clear line of demarcation that separates each year from the one before it. The correlation between temperature and CO2 concentrations over the past thousand years is shocking. However, Gore, who won the Nobel Prize uh, a year after the book was, he won the Nobel Peace Prize, the year after the book was published for his work in climate change activism, he revealed how the team uncovered findings from 650,000 years ago, referring to the CO2 levels, how they shot up over the last 1,000 years, he added, in Antarctica, measurements of CO2 concentrations and temperature go back 650,000 years. The blue line shows CO2 concentrations over this period. The top right side, the blue line, represents the present era. The dip down is the last ice age. At no point in the last 650,000 years did the CO2 concentration go above 300 parts per million. Gore then referred to a second graph reflecting temperatures in the world that mirrored the first. And he said the gray line shows the world's temperature over the same 650,000 years. It's a complicated relationship, but the most important part is when there is more CO2 in the atmosphere, the temperature increases because more heat from the sun is trapped inside. And as we know, CO2 is now way above anything measured in the prior 650,000 years. That was 350 parts per million. And within 45 years, it will be at 600 parts per million. If we allow this to happen, it would be deeply and unforgivably moral. It would condemn coming generations to a catastrophically diminished future. It's not the first time scientists made these shock findings in the frozen desert, though. NASA scientist Dr. Jerome Chapeles carried out similar experiments in 2010 at the Grenoble Glaciology Laboratory, which gave an insight into the last ice age and allowed him to predict the next ice age. And he said during Amazon's Prime Steps to the Future series, once it's been cut, it gives us the remains of the last ice age. What does an ice age look like? It typically looks the whole uh, of the northern hemisphere covered in ice. Two kilometers of ice on Canada and the Alpine glaciers spread to Lyon, France. Of course, this article, these articles here do not give any reference to the volcanic eruptions, the tremendous amount that we've had lately, the fact that all this and earthquakes also give out tremendous amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, a lot more than what is man-made during each year. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. 
Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.